I always thought that my girlfriend was a 10, and to be honest, I have pretty low self-esteem. I'm not nearly as close to her level of attractiveness as I'd like to be. To get a pretty clear picture of me, let me describe myself in a few words. I am shorter than my girlfriend. I have no visible abs. My arms are skinny. I still have pimples on my face even though I am 28 years old. My job, well, is not one I can be particularly proud of. Even though it pays the bills, I work as a receptionist at some hotel at the edge of town. Now, let's move on to my girlfriend. She's tall, has beautiful green eyes, dark hair, full lips, and whenever we go out, people would just stare at her and sometimes other guys would even walk up to her and ask her for her number. Even though I am right there next to Michelle. That's her name. She would always say that I am the one for her and she loves me. But lately, I don't know. Something feels off. I see her on her phone most of the time, smiling or even laughing. And if I ask what's so funny, she would just smile at me and say that she's talking to her friends. But I didn't think that to be true. I thought she was cheating on me and it would be just a matter of time until she would break up with me and go for another guy who was in her league. One night, while she was asleep, I heard her phone buzz. I didn't want to be the type of guy to snoop around and to not trust her, but something told me to see who messaged her. I got out of bed, slowly walked to her nightstand, and just as I was going to pick up her phone, I heard, mm. She woke up. What are you doing, babe? She asked me while stretching her arms over her head. Um, nothing. I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't want her to think that I was going through her phone. I saw her empty glass next to her phone and I knew what to say. I wanted to go get some water and I saw that your glass is empty so I'll refill it for you. You know how you feel thirsty throughout the night. I told her while grabbing the glass. Thank you, she said in a very sleepy voice. I went downstairs but all I could think of was the fact that she might be cheating on me. After I drank some water, I went on to my computer. I wanted to look up some sort of device so I can track her. I didn't know what I was looking for, so I just typed in girlfriend cheating spy. Those keywords took me nowhere. I changed the search term, but still nothing. Only a bunch of small cameras and stuff. Then the only thing I could do was to use the dark web. I haven't been there for ages, I said to myself while thinking about it. It was like I was going on a quest or something. Where is it? I searched for the right browser, I set everything up, and there I was, on the dark web looking up spy devices like an absolute psycho. No, hmm, no, I said quietly so my girlfriend wouldn't wake up. Suddenly something popped up that caught my eyes. It was very different from all the other devices I managed to stumble across. It was something along the lines of a small camera which can be attached to someone's eye. It could record stuff and even pick up sound. I was more intrigued than anything. I placed an order seeing it was only $20 with free shipping. Seeing that I can't find anything serious except the joke of a camera, I closed my laptop and went back to bed. The next day, I woke up a little bit late. Shit, 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 I say while looking for my clothes. What's wrong? Michelle asked. I'm late to work and I can't find my pants. I reply while frantically looking around the room. Fast forward, later in the day and I arrived home. Michelle was out with some friends, or at least that's what she wrote on a note pinned to the dresser. I threw my bag on the floor and got into the kitchen to get some water. I saw that the glass was already full and I drank it. All of a sudden, I felt my knees were weak and before I knew it, I blacked out. I woke up about three hours later on the couch, but I remember so clearly that I was just in the kitchen. I got up and said, Michelle? Michelle, are you home? But I didn't get a response. I grabbed my phone and saw a text message. Order delivered, it said, and the message ended with a link. I didn't want to click on it, thinking it was something spammy, so I just ignored it so I can call Michelle. Hey baby, did you get home? She said. Yeah, where are you? I asked her. Just out with the girls having a couple of drinks, she said. I got nervous. I didn't want to sound controlling, but I didn't trust her friends. They always seemed like they enjoy getting around, if you know what I mean. Okay, babe, I'll be waiting for you. Stay safe, I told her. Sure thing. I won't be long. Love you, she replied. 
I wanted to go to the bathroom, but something seemed wrong. It was like I had something in my eye, and it tickled a little bit. I started rubbing and rubbing. At that moment, I got another message. Don't do that. You'll hurt your eye. I was baffled. Who could have sent that? It didn't say from which number it came from, just like the delivery one. I looked around, looked outside, but there was no one there, just me. I decided to click on the link and it sent me to a video. It was my living room. What the hell? I said. I moved around the house while looking at my phone and I noticed that the video was live. It was broadcasting from inside my house. And worst of all, when I blinked, the screen would go black. This can't be happening, I said while wanting to text the person who did this to me. But I couldn't send anything because I didn't have a number. Instead, I got a new text. Don't bother trying to contact me. You can't. All you can do is speak and I'll hear it. Maybe I'll respond and maybe I won't, the text said. Why did you do this? Do you think it's funny? What did you do to my eye? I asked, speaking by myself in the house. Are you this dense? Why do you think the camera was so cheap? With such impressive technology? I own you now. Everything you see, I see. So if you don't want me to ruin your life and steal every password and every cent you have, be sure that you're gonna pay. Oh, and don't even think about closing one eye when you enter a password or a card pin. You'll slip up eventually. And I have all the time in the world, the next text said. I couldn't believe it. I was being blackmailed and I couldn't do anything about it. All because I was sure that my girlfriend was cheating on me. I sat there on my couch and thought to myself, what can I do to get out of this mess? But I didn't speak. I didn't want the guy to hear me. In the meantime, my girlfriend came home. After those drinks, she was feeling kind of frisky, but I couldn't let the guy see what I saw. I'm tired, baby, not tonight, I told her. She got upset and went upstairs. Wouldn't mind seeing that, the next text said. After that day, my life kind of fell apart. I couldn't be with my girlfriend. I couldn't do anything because I was thinking that that guy could see it. I couldn't focus on other things. I couldn't pay attention at work. I nearly got fired because of that camera. The guy kept bombarding me with all kinds of messages, commenting on everything I did. I started to become depressed. I couldn't take it anymore. One evening, I had a little bit to drink, and I don't know why, because of the alcohol or the depression, I went outside, drove drunk to a nearby bridge and hopped up on the ledge. I didn't want to live anymore. I couldn't live like this. Did you enjoy this story? Do hit the subscribe button because part two will be releasing soon. On to the next video now. I threw away the used tissues and sighed loudly. I was tired of moping around, crying over someone who didn't want me. My boyfriend broke up with me two weeks ago and it had been difficult for me. Stanley had been the one person that I loved wholeheartedly and for him to tell me he found someone else was a blow to my heart. I was 24 and it felt like I had finally found stability after graduating from college. Stanley and I used to talk about the plans we had for our lives. It had been so easy to talk to him, and now he was gone. I shook my head to arrest my line of thoughts. I was almost out of tissue and couldn't afford to start crying again. I paced across my room for a few minutes. I lived alone, so there was no one to talk to. I grew bored after a while and my gaze landed on my laptop. I fired it up and decided to go to the dark web. I had been hearing a lot about it and it wouldn't hurt to see for myself. My face scrunched up in disgust as I browsed through the contents on the dark web. I was completely grossed out, and when I stumbled on a site claiming they could organize orgies, I shut down my laptop. I resolved never to go back there again. At least my curiosity had been satisfied. Taking that step had given me something else to think about, so I was able to take my mind off Stanley. The rest of the days passed by in a blur and I didn't spend time crying and feeling sorry for myself. I decided to take myself out, so I went to a nice restaurant not far from my house. The decor was beautiful and I enjoyed every minute of it. It wasn't very expensive and the food tasted quite nice. I tipped the waiter generously. As I was leaving, my phone lighted up with a message. How was the food in that restaurant? 
I halted in my tracks, glancing around, trying to see if I was being pranked. The message was from an unknown number. I had no clue who it could be since I didn't tell anyone I would be going out. A thought came to my mind, and it could be a marketing message. Perhaps they wanted me to leave a review. I shrugged and ignored the message, walking back to my place. The next morning, I stayed in bed and watched Sex Education on Netflix. It helped me keep my mind off thinking about Stanley. Just as I finished watching it, a message entered my phone. Adam ain't that huge, is he? My heart started to beat faster. It was the same number that asked me about the food the other day. What was going on? The messages didn't stop. One evening, as I closed the cab door and paid the driver, my phone pinged again. It asked how the cab ride was. At that point, I didn't know what to feel anymore. I felt violated because it suddenly seemed like I had no privacy anymore. Colgate is the right toothpaste for you. I read the message and stared at myself in the mirror. I was going crazy with all the messages I was receiving. I spat out the toothpaste in my mouth and glared at the Colgate tube. My mood had turned sour after that. It had only gotten worse the next day when I planned to go out. As I was dressing up, another message came in. Your rack looks great in that red bra. I screamed in annoyance as I read the message. I removed my red bra in anger and wore a black one. How exactly did this person know what I was wearing? I constantly looked over my back, but for the life of me, I couldn't figure out who was stalking me. It felt like they were right beside me. How did the person know I used Colgate toothpaste? Or the color of the bra I was wearing? It was getting intense for me, and I didn't know who to talk to. They would probably think I was going crazy. I couldn't take it anymore. I was on my way to see a private detective. I thought I could handle it, but just that morning I had received three messages from the same weird number. The first one said that I should eat more instead of just taking Cheerios. I had thrown my cereal bowl away in frustration. The second one came later in the morning and it was reminding me to drink water because I had not been taking enough water. The last one that broke my resolve and endurance was sent just an hour ago. I had just finished taking a shower and changed into some comfortable clothes. The message said, Wear the red one. You look amazing in red. After that, I had gone out with one purpose in mind. I had to find someone to help me. The private detective looked at me with a warm smile. He seemed to be in his 30s and had no wedding band. I narrated my plight to him and he heaved a deep sigh. He said he had a good idea what was going on but wouldn't like to jump to conclusions. He followed me back home and held out some kind of device. He ran the device over my place and shook his head every time it beeped, which was a lot. When he was done, he told me that my house was bugged and that was the reason why that person knew everything I was doing. Your whole house has micro cameras rigged around and your online activity is being monitored. I could arrange for it to be cleaned out for you if you want. I shook my head and politely declined. For my house to have been planted with cameras meant the person knew my location. I thanked the private detective and paid him the money I promised. Within me, I was sure it was because of the dark web that I visited that day. There was only one way I knew I could fix the mess I was in. That night, as I got home, I packed up all my things so I could leave town the next morning. I wouldn't let some psychopath mess with my mind. The person was obviously deriving joy from harassing me and I couldn't let that continue. I changed my phone and my laptop and got a new place in the next town. I never visited the dark web again and even though I got scared when I received a message on my phone, I knew that I would be alright. Starting a new life in a different town was quite challenging, but I knew I would do my best.